to another edition of Play It Throw, and on this edition it's Blaster Master, brought to us by Sunsoft. Now this is one of the all-time classics of 8-bit gaming, and I think every gamer has played this game at least once. And while it may be a very popular title of the 8-bit era, not too many gamers were actually able to complete it. Now a lot of that has to do with the enemies in the game, as well as the boss battles. However, the most challenging thing about the game has to be the fact that the first few levels go in order. However, you then have to backtrack through all the previous levels in order to progress in the game. Another interesting thing about this game definitely is the storyline, as we're seeing it progress right now in the intro. You play as a kid named Jason who has a pet frog named Fred. One day Fred leaps out of his cage and goes into the backyard. Fred somehow finds a radioactive container, grows huge, and then jumps into a nearby hole. Jason follows him, jumps in the hole, survives the fall of the hole, then Jason discovers a battle tank, which happens to be one of my favorite names of the 8-bit era. Sophia the Third. I assume inside the tank was a battle suit. Jason puts it on, jumps in the battle tank, and our game begins. Now this game overall is a pretty lengthy game, so I'm gonna have plenty of time to talk about the gameplay and all. But to finish up a little bit of the storyline, now this game in Japan is known as Chowakusei Senkei Meta Fight, or translate it Super Planet War Chronicles Meta Fight. I'll just go ahead and say Meta Fight for short. Now in the Japanese storyline, you play as a guy named Kane who uses the Metal Attacker, not the Sophia the Third, to stop an invasion of his planet, which is named Sophia in the Japanese version, by the evil Emperor Goaz. However, the big difference between the Japanese and the American version is the American version has a longer intro, like you saw explained seeing the frog jump into the hole and we find the tank. Japanese version, you just see the tank take off, except it's on a space shuttle or a space station instead of in the cave. Okay, so time to move on to the actual gameplay of the game. Now, as you can see, I'm already actually about halfway through level 1, almost near the end of it. However, you're going to be seeing a lot of level 1 throughout the course of the run. Now, this is one of those rare 8-bit games that combines multiple types of gameplay in one game. You have that main world gameplay, which I'm currently at, and now I've just entered the second type of gameplay. We have this top-down view where we can see a bigger version of our main character Jason in his battle suit. Now in this top-down mode, you actually have two modes of attack. You have your regular gun, as well as grenades. On the mainstream map, the grenades button is taken up by your jump button. Now also in this top-down mode, this is where you're going to be actually facing all of your bosses throughout the game. You go through the main overworld type map, you go into one of these small caves, and it leads to a boss battle. Now there's a lot of other small caves throughout each level to kind of confuse you. Most of them are just dead ends that either lead to a couple little power-ups for you, or just completely nothing other than kind of distracting you from your main goal. Now in this top-down mode, you also have gun upgrades. As you can see on the left side of the screen, I have a gun meter and a pow meter. Pow meaning power or my health, gun obviously meaning my gun upgrade. Now later on in the game, you're really going to need the gun upgrade, but for most of the regular bosses, you can easily beat them with the grenades. It's actually more beneficial to use the grenades. The worst thing about the gun upgrade is, it goes up by one every time you grab an item, however it also goes down by one every time you get hit. Now here is our first boss of the game, I'm going to be using the grenades on him. A pretty easy, like, flying brain-esque creature. As you can see, he has the things going around him, but if you're quick with the grenades, mashing the button fast enough, or if you want to use the turbo button. But you can usually take him out before his armor, or his things surrounding him, get close enough to his body to actually do damage to you. Now every time we defeat a boss, we end up getting an upgrade for our tank. This time we got an upgraded shot with our gun that's going to allow us to enter a couple of doors that we couldn't enter before this. Most notably, the door that's going to lead us to level 2. Now when I'm back on the main map, the gun upgrades that I gained from inside the level no longer applies. As you can see on the upper left side of the screen is an HOV meter that's not actually there right now. 
Now that's the hover meter, which will be getting the hover jets or hover boost later on from one of the other bosses in the game. Another thing you'll notice pretty early on is you actually have two health meters. You have one health meter for Sophia, the tank, and then you also have a separate health meter for when you get out of the tank and you're walking around just as Jason. Now just the normal enemies in the game can do a lot of damage, however at least when you kill most of them, they have the possibility of dropping a health upgrade to give you one of your health back. Now that upgraded gun that I had gotten earlier from that first boss is what I used just there to go ahead and destroy that base, that totem. Now the gun was automatically equipped, you don't have to equip it or anything. However, that was the reason why I was able to defeat it. If I had gone there early on without getting that upgrade, I wouldn't have been able to defeat that enemy. So now we've entered stage number two. As you saw, there was a little title screen that told you what stage you were in. And you may think that we don't have to worry about stage number one now because we're already now in stage number two. However, we'll quickly learn, after only defeating stage three, that there's nowhere else to go but backwards in order to make it to another stage. Which is definitely one of the main reasons why this game is so difficult to navigate, especially with no kind of guide. Now, in each of these stages, there's going to be a lot of rooms that I'm not even going to travel to. They either lead to dead ends, or just some of the top-down rooms that either have, like, a gun upgrade, or also lead to just a dead end. When you're first playing this game, especially when you don't know exactly where you're going, you'll find one of those rooms think, Oh, I finally found the boss because you've been looking for a long time. Get into that room and realize, well, that wasn't the boss room. As a kid, that was definitely one of the most annoying things about trying to get farther into this game. Now, due to the backtracking and everything that's required to get farther into the game, we're going to be seeing a lot of stage number two. Now, as we continue on through this stage, you've got to deal with the lava and you got to get used to the jumping pretty much. It's a good stage to get used to the jumping. Since, like I said, we're going to be seeing it a lot, you'll get used to it pretty quickly. Now, the actual stage where we can get to the top-down view to fight the boss of this stage is way into it, as you can tell. As we travel through this door, we reach a different colored area, but we're still in that same stage number two. Uh, and we're going to head upwards here. We're going to actually be seeing this room quite a few times, because there's actually other links to other stages from this room. Like, especially those doors, as you can see right there in that bottom left corner for a second, there was another door. We'll be going in that one later on. Now, we travel north, watching out for these enemies as best as possible. They're pretty hard to dodge, because you can't really see them until you've already made the jump. So as soon as you make the jump, all of a sudden there's one right on top of you, and you're probably going to take damage. Like I said though, thankfully a lot of the enemies can give you health upgrades, so anytime you get low on health, it's good to just go back and forth fighting easier enemies to try to gain some health back. Now we're actually almost to the top down part with the boss. We're going to move over to the right here, drop all the way down, get past like these ladybug-esque looking robot monsters. Down here though is a health thing, so you can get your full health back. And then travel a little bit to the left, travel down, throw a little bit more of a maze and go through this door, and this is the door that's going to lead us to that room. Travel over, and we're going to have to get out of our ship in a second, and go inside. Now this is a pretty easy one to navigate as well, the first level obviously being the easiest, but there is a few little extra doors and such, but the easiest path is just to go up from here. Watch out for the spikes. If you want to go grab the power, you can, but you're going to lose at least one health while trying to get it. Most of the enemies are pretty easy to take out, and you can see them way ahead of time. And most of the enemies you can just completely ignore unless you're trying to get health back or such. Watch out for the moving eyeballs, they can be a little bit of an annoyance. Okay, just two more rooms, go right here, go around this path, and then we'll lead into the boss room. Now here we go with boss number two, a little bit more challenging definitely than boss number one, however our strategy is going to basically remain the same of using the grenades on him. You have to watch out for the tentacle type things that he has, that his big long claws that, he, that comes out of him, and you've got to hit him directly in his mouth, like the moving claw part thing of his mouth. Just move around, dodge the tentacles or dodge the arms of him as much as possible, that's really going to be more of your focus than actually trying to hit him. And anytime they go way up in the air, or you can tell about where they're going to go, get your good opportunity to get in there and deliver a whole bunch of grenades quickly to them. Continue dodging as best as possible while also dodging the arms, and after only a little bit, he will be done. Now by defeating him, we do get another one of the gun upgrades, and it'll allow us to move into stage number three. 
Now what this gun upgrade did is it's going to allow us to destroy a certain type of brick that's going to allow us to get into some of the passages. Remember that door I mentioned earlier in the lower left corner that we saw when we were traveling up to get to this room? Well, that's one of those types of rooms that are blocked off by those types of blocks. However, the room we're actually going to be going into is one just slightly below that one. So, of course, we have a little bit of backtracking to do to get back to that room. That's pretty much what you're going to be doing most of the game. Make it back through this room. Watch out for the ladybug S4 robots, I like to call them. I don't really know why. They just kind of remind me of them, even though they're gray. Now, when we get back to this room, we're going to head down. Try to be careful while trying to avoid the enemies that are on the platforms now below you, instead of the ones that were now above you when we were going through it the first time. If you take any damage, or take a little bit of damage, you can always take out some of the random other enemies to try to gain some of your health back. Now, see those bricks I just destroyed? Those are the ones I was talking about. Now we're going to head into this room, and it's going to lead us...